Today on AllOneVideos.com, we're going to show you another how to do it. Alright, so we've already removed the lower fairing. Uh, if you have any questions on how to do that, refer to our oil change video. We're going to take off the mid fairing now. Uh, we're going to do these bolts right here and a couple of pop rivets in the front. Uh, we'll pop those real quick. So, under the nose, you've got a couple pop rivets, one at the front, one at the rear. There are actually two at the front, but you only need to pop one of them. Here. Basically that guy, and then one at the back. There. And if you don't know how these work, it'll be like that in the bike. Just Press it in with a tool, slides right out by hand. You don't have to tear those up to remove them. You're going to kind of give it a little, little wiggle on the front right here. And slide this forward and back until she comes out. Kind of wiggle it out of there. There you go. And you've got your turn signal right here to release. Factory connection, just lift. Pull those apart. Basically what we're trying to get to is your radiator cap right here. That's about all you're going to need to release that guy. We may go a little farther and take off the ram air intake as well. Alright, we're on the other side of the bike now. We're going to put our catch pan under the coolant hose. There's a, a drain right here. If you can follow that. It's 10 millimeter. We're just going to put this on here and crack this guy loose. And we're going to let all our coolant drain out of there. So we're back on the right side of the bike above the radiator. We're going to remove the ram air intake and the inner cowling right here just to make this job a little easier. Basically it's going to be another plastic rivet. This one actually calls for a, a screwdriver here rather than a pop rivet. I'm going to pop that guy out and it's going to fall on the floor. Uh, on the bottom here there's another holding it. Just kind of give it a, a very gentle twist and those come right out. It's, you don't have to manhandle those. They are plastic rivets so don't get crazy with them. That's going to remove our inner inner there. For the tube at the top, there's going to be a screw at the top here. And a pop rivet on the back side of the tube right here. Again, just press down, pops, gently lift up, it's going to come right out. So there's your pop rivet, there was your screw. Next, another pop rivet right here in the front of the ram air tube. Again, just press it in, a little shake, it come right out. Very easy. Don't manhandle those, you'll break them right there. One more at the back of the ram air tube here, going into the frame. Notice how this is set up here. We've got a heat shield on top of the ram air tube. Pop that over. Make sure you put it back the same way. So we've popped it. Gonna give it a little shake right here. Catch that guy. Don't forget to put that back. That's important. So now our rammer tube is gonna be loose enough to wiggle out of the way. And it's got the wiring harness attached to it here. We're just gonna leave that and let it hang. No reason to unconnect that. Just leave it be. Let it hang there. Now we've got access to our fill cap on our radiator. We still have our coolant drain plug removed over there. We're going to take some distilled water, 
pour it into the radiator fill cap right here to kind of flush this system out a little bit. Uh, your coolant system holds about three quarts of water. So I've got a gallon of water here that will be used for something else, but this is going to be more than enough to flush the system. We've got another fresh gallon of distilled water right here to fill it back up when we're done. Be sure you're using distilled water, not spring water, not drinking water, not tap water, distilled water only. So we're going to flush this right now by just taking some water and pour this through. until we see it coming out clear on the drain side over here. Right now you can see we're still a little green. Probably gonna pour about a half a gallon through this system just to kind of clean it out. All right, so our water's running clear. We're pretty well flushed out. We're ready to cap that off and, and top off our system. Okay, so we're gonna reinstall our, our drain bolt, making sure that we did not lose our copper crush washer that's on here. You'll want to inspect that. Those are usually pretty good for a, a couple of uses. Uh, inspect it, make sure it's gonna, gonna be fine. This one is just fine. I'm gonna slap it back on here. So you've got that cranked down. We're going to go to the other side of the bike and put in our water wetter and our distilled water. Alright, so we're going to put water wetter in our coolant system today. Uh, this is to help the bike run cooler, uh, which as you R1 owners know, these things do run pretty hot. So this is going to drop our temperature, our running and operating temperature on this bike by quite a bit. Uh, this calls for about an ounce per quart. Uh, we talked about earlier this coolant system holds about three quarts, so we're going to pour about three ounces of water into the fill cap here. On the bottle, there's one ounce marker lines. It's calling for about three ounces, so we're going to go from, we'll call that an ounce, ounce, ounce. We're going to get about to that line there for this bottle and this bike. You can't overdo this product. You'll just be wasting it if you put more than, than what it calls for. So we we're a little under that. We've got about three and a half ounces. That'll be just fine. Now again, we're going to take our distilled water and pour until it's full. Should call for about three quarts. You want to kind of pour slowly so the bubbles can work their way to the top, especially as you get really close to being full. Okay, so we've got this filled up. You can see we're an overflow a little bit. Not a big deal. We're to the top of this guy. Next we're going to go back to the reservoir bottle and drain that and fill that with water as well. This is our rear brake reservoir. Behind this on this bracket is our coolant reservoir. We need to get in there and we're going to uh, drain that and then fill that with some distilled water as well. It's kind of tight. It's hard to get to in here. Uh, it's an 8 millimeter hex. I'm just going to loosen this up a bit. This is going to get the brake reservoir out of the way so we can get to the fill point on the coolant reservoir. And there's your little hold bolt there. Turn this out of the way a little bit. And now we can get to our coolant reservoir here. This is the cap. Just going to pull that all the way out of the way there. And this particular reservoir is pretty close to dry. Normally you'll have some coolant in here between the low and the full line. This is actually a brake bleeding tool, but uh, it'll suck water out of the, the reservoir in there. works very well. Uh, the other option is, is you can just leave this alone. There's like 0.26 of a liter in your coolant reservoir. Uh, it's just an overflow reservoir for when the system gets hot. So you can, you can either leave this or if you're a racer or somebody that really wants to be thorough, you can drain this out. And that is empty. Nothing in there. So we're going to take our funnel, get it over the fill, and just pour some water in until we get to the, the fill line on there, the full line. Doesn't take much at all. Take our hose here back down into the reservoir and make sure you get this cap on. Moving tight. 
All right, so we're good there. We're going to reinstall our brake reservoir, rear brake reservoir bracket. Uh, by the way, if your brake fluid is this color, uh, you're going to want to change that. Uh, we'll be doing an episode soon on bleeding or cleaning out your brake system. So look forward to that in the future. This definitely needs to be done. Eight millimeter socket, just kind of squeeze it in there. Okay, so with a little bit of fighting, we've got that screw back in there on the on the reservoir. Again, it's the brake reservoir bracket that attaches to the coolant reservoir. Kind of a tight fit. You'll have to fight it a little bit if you have big hands. Good luck. Crank that down. You don't have to get crazy with it. Don't try to torque it down. It's it's going into a plastic housing, so don't get too too crazy cranking that down. But uh, you can kind of see our water water level level there now. See that moving around? We're at the full mark. You want to be between low and full, obviously. So there we are. We're good to go on the reservoir. We're now going to start the bike up with the radiator fill cap still off. The radiator is full. We haven't replaced the cap yet. We're actually going to start and run the bike to get the water to go through the system. We're going to let it run until it gets up to temperature, about 170, 180 degrees. This is going to take a little bit of time while it's sitting in your garage or where you're working on it. So just start the bike. This will bubble and overflow. We'll try to show you that as it gets to that. That's okay. Let it do its thing. When you turn the bike off, you're going to top the system off. So we're going to start the bike and let it run until we get up to temperature. Okay, when you get that, you know you're hot. We're going to top it off. All right, we'll pull the top. Uh, maybe a good tip for the future, don't leave your tools <laughs> right under the, the radiator. So basically we ran the bike until it got up to temperature, thermostat opened, we've got some water coming out of the top of the cap. We know we're to temperature, we're gonna to top this off again. You can see the water levels dropped again. Don't ever stand in front of this. As you saw, the water comes out of there you know, really hot. Obviously, don't stand right there looking in the hole while the bike's running. Uh, get away to get scalded and burned. Let that sit again for just a second. See if that level drops. Then we're going to cap it, put it back together, and we'll be done. All right, again, so we've run the bike to temperature. We've topped off our radiator. We're going to reinstall the cap. Right there. Turn it until it's locked down bike's ready to go back together. Again, it's going to be air intake tube and then the heat shield from under the engine there, or on top of the engine I should say. Install that guy right there. Press. Help it along. Another one here at the front. Pop that there. That in here like this. And these took the, the rivets that use the Phillips head screw right here on the back. Same thing. Don't have to crank those down, they're just a little, little touch right there. There's another one on the underside at the front here. Right 
you want to be sure you start by plugging in your turn signal there this has to go under the bottom of the nose or I should say on top of the bottom of the nose cone so it's kind of tricky you slide that in slide that in there When you get it all lined up, it should pull back into place. Have a good solid fit like that. So slide in our Zeus fasteners. back here two pop rivets again up under the nose cone so the pop rivet at the rear and this one's a little tough sometimes You've got to kind of work it in there you'll know it's secure if it doesn't pull out that's good we're in good shape there Go to the other side, install those. All right, so we're going to take our old antifreeze coolant and dispose of it properly and pour it into one of the empty distilled water containers and then take it to any auto parts store or like a Walmart where they'll dispose of it for you cleanly. All right, so for a recap, we drained the antifreeze coolant out of the 2004 R1, replaced it with distilled water and water wetter uh, to get the bike to operate cooler. Uh, we used just water and water wetter. It has no uh, antifreeze property so if you live anywhere where the bike is going to be in freezing temperatures you'd want to do something with uh, some coolant or some antifreeze here in Texas where we are we don't ride in freezing temperatures it doesn't get that cold here so we can get away with just the distilled water and the water wetter uh, it's also approved for racing so if you're a CMRA or a Weir racer uh, the distilled water and the water wetter is, is race approved um, you're going to want to change out your coolant or the water about every couple of years. Uh, just check it, keep an eye on it. Uh, the reservoir at the back of the bike near the rear shop, keep an eye on that. Keep that topped up. And that's a wrap on another how-to video from r1videos.com. If you find our videos helpful, please be sure to comment, like, and of course subscribe to our channel. And if you haven't already, check us out on our website at www.r1videos.com.